When the masters of old invented Taiji over successive generations, and as each master rose to a sufficient level of expertise, they wrote down what they were feeling about their practice so that future generations could also gain what they had gained um, a little quicker maybe because of what they wrote down. However, they never meant for these so-called Taiji classics to be for absolute beginners. Nowadays, of course, we see many books and videos, etc., explaining the so-called classics. And beginners can buy these books, anyone can buy them, and then they read them and they say, okay, uh, the, the body is held like being held from a string from the crown, from the Bahui point, in other words, and so then they do their Tai Chi like, oh, I'm being, I'm being pulled up by a piece of string. But the old masters didn't mean that at all. In fact, that was just, the classics are like Chinese paintings. When a Chinese artist of old did a painting, it was for his own benefit. He would paint something from his memory. He wouldn't even look at something as modern artists do and paint what they see. He would sit there for hours looking at a scene and then go back home and then a couple of days later he would attempt to paint that scene from his memory. Then he'd roll it when it was dry, he'd roll it up and put it away somewhere and then years later he could take it out and everything that he was thinking about then was in that painting and it, and it would come back to him like as if it were yesterday. And that's the reason that they have. And it's the same reason that the Chinese masters wrote the classics. So when a Chinese master wrote down something like, you must do your Taiji as if being suspended from, from the crown by a piece of string, that was just a, a, a little phrase to jolt his memory as to what he was thinking when he was doing his Taiji. That's like a key that you put in a lock. When you open the lock, this whole new world opens up. There's a whole lot more inside that door that that small phrase represents. So we should never take those small phrases that are written down in the, in the classics and take them as being uh, for real, we, or, or take them literally, in other words. The Chinese masters felt certain things coming from within them when they were doing their Taiji, as any person who rises to a high enough level does. And it's a difficult thing to write it down, especially into the English language. This has been my job over the years as a communicator to try and write these feelings down so that future generations will be able to gain what I've gained from Taiji maybe a little quicker than the huge amount of years it's taken me. So when I come to a point in my training and I'm practicing my form and I think about this maxim of being, for instance, being suspended from above by a piece of string, I know exactly what the Chinese masters were thinking and what they actually meant. And it was nothing like being pulled up. That was just the way the body feels when you practice Tai Chi in the correct manner. And this Tai Chi classic of being pulled up from the Bahui point or the crown by a piece of string is, is, is the main what is called a cornerstone or can be translated as a building block or a building stone of Taiji. There are four of these building stones or cornerstones of Taiji. But the, ma the main one is this one of being pulled up from by a piece of string. The being pulled up by a piece of string, as I said, doesn't represent being pulled up by a piece of string. It represents how we hold the body 
when we practice our Tai Chi. The first cornerstone of Tai Chi being feeling like you're being pulled up by a piece of string from the crown really relates to the way we hold the body and where in particular where the weight is placed during Tai Chi. Now to tell a beginner this they would concentrate too much upon that and so of course they wouldn't learn Tai Chi correctly, they wouldn't learn the movements for instance correctly because they'd be concentrating too much on this maximum which is why we only give it to people at an advanced stage or if beginners do know about this then they shouldn't concentrate too much on it until some later stage in their training when they're ready to receive this sort of advanced information. When you practice Taiji with the weight correctly centered where it should be the whole body falls into place. There's a point on your foot that we commonly call the sweet spot and this is exactly where the weight should be centered most of the time during your Tai Chi training. Of course there are times when you'll pick your foot up or whatever when the weight has to roll forward onto the ball of the foot of course and then be placed onto the heel and then placed. But all of the major postures in Tai Chi <coughs> such as stalk spreads wings Brush knee, twist step, single whip, etc. All have the weight placed over the weighted foot at this sweet spot. And this is very important. And once you gain this information, and once you know exactly where this sweet spot is <coughs> in your body, everything else will just fall into place for you. What the masters meant when they meant by pulling from a string up. They meant that it's like the energy is being pulled up through your backbone and into the crown. More importantly, into these two points here, just below there's a little, it goes in there, just at the back of the skull, that's called gallbladder 20. Gallbladder 20 are chi activation points and very important points in your body which relates also to things called the reptilian brain. And this is where the energy comes up through your body from the kidney one point or from the dantian down to the kidney one point and then it comes up through your body and this is what's called there's another type Chinese maxim which relates very much to this first cornerstone called uh, raise the back. Now this is another thing that's been totally mistranslated over the years to raise the back really should say raise the chi or raise the energy up the back into the gallbladder 20 points. But that's but if we give that to beginners, they're gonna be doing a tai chi form saying, yeah, raise the chi, oh the chi is going up through my back, and all that energy raises, and they're getting tai chi wrong. Because you shouldn't, of course, yet you should be sunk into that sweet spot, which I'll show you in a minute. So the energy actually raises up the backbone into those points. And the only way to really get that happening is, if when, is when you have your weight correctly centered on the base of your foot. I'm going to point to a point here on the base of my foot. Here, this is the spot where the energy should be centered and the weight should be centered. We have a straight line, a vertical line going from the bahui or the crown straight down through the body, through, through the middle of the shoulders down to this point. There it is, right there. So if you look at the base of the foot going down here, there's the heel just there, the round heel. So it's just where the heel, just there. right there. Now if I'm doing Qigong for instance, we also hold this position in our Qigong, you never ever put the weight over the balls of your feet in Qigong. You must always put the weight